Hi everyone and welcome to today's painting tutorial. So today I'm going to be taking you through how I go about painting the uh, Zinch armor that you might have seen in my Chaos Warriors. So these are the colors you'll need today. So Thousand Suns Blue, Araman Blue, White Scar, and Druchi or Druki Violet. Never really sure on the pronunciation on that one. Um, surely one of those two. But anyway, and as you can see on my wet palette here, I've got the three colors mixed up. So Thousand Suns Blue, Araman Blue, and White Scar all ready to go on my wet palette. Um, now, you don't necessarily need a wet palette to do this, um, but it will be helpful. Uh, and in fact, just in general, I'd recommend getting one because they're really cheap um, and you will get a lot more out of uh, each paint pot that you purchase um, because the paint simply just doesn't dry up. Um, either that or, of course, um, you can buy paint retardant um, to keep your paints going longer. Um, but um, yeah, for me at the moment, I just use a wet palette. So anyway, on to the armor. So um, as you can see, really straightforward. Just going to start applying the Thousand Suns Blue um, all over this. Now, you can do two thin coats of this if you want as a base coat. Um, generally, I just do the one and then I go over it with the Druji Violet. Um, and then I go back to the Thousand Suns Blue. But anyway, I'll get to that when it comes to it. So just start applying it all around. And as you can see, the Thousand Suns Blue is applied. Now onto Druki Violet, or Druchi. I'm probably gonna keep switching between pronunciation on that throughout the duration of the video. Um, and yeah, I don't really use this sparingly as well since I am gonna be going back um, to apply the Thousand Suns Blue anyway. Um, I tend to do this with my shades a lot. A lot of people might cringe at that, but for me it just it works. Um, it's just how I like to do it. And um, one thing I should mention though, just be careful it doesn't pull uh, against the cloak that you've already done as well. Um, if you decided, of course, to go with the cloak first. Um, And as you can see, the Druki Violet is all dried now. All dry now, I should say. So now I'm just going to be going on to... So I've... I have gone Thousand Suns Blue here, and I've also mixed in just a tad of Araman Blue. I'm just making sure that I have my brush on a nice angle. It's comfortable. Just going to start picking out some key parts of the armor plating. And the key to this part of the armor highlighting is just good brush control and just making sure that you have a nice paint consistency.
And as you can see already, what a difference just that one highlight has done. I have to say as well, for never having used these particular colors before I started painting Chaos, um, in particular the Chaos Warriors, um, they have some really beautiful colors to work with. Um, I'd never even used Druki Violet before, um, before having uh, started on these Chaos Warriors. So yeah, for anyone else who hasn't used them before, I'd recommend giving them a shot. Uh, even if it was something as simple as just gemstones, for example. Um, it's just a really cool kind of icy, uh, icy blue. Well, what it works up to at least. So just to keep applying that as tidy, tidy as you can, as neatly as you can, I should say. And as you can see, it's really coming together. Now, I'm gonna try and get the wet palette into the background there, just so you can see how I'm mixing this. Uh, apologies if it does go out of focus a little bit here and there. So as you can see, starting to lift up the color just a little bit more. And the best thing about a wet palette, well, one of the best things is that if you do make an error, you can just so quickly just um, without even necessarily washing the brush, just grab the darker tone um, and just go back and, and quickly fix that. And in actual fact, if you do that, whilst the paint's still wet as well, you end up getting a nice, you know, beautifully bent, uh, blended color anyway, so it's not even always uh, um, works out to be a bad thing or an annoyance. So I just had to move the model out of the way there, just so you can get an idea of um, what I'm doing with the colors. One thing I should mention as well is to never be afraid of just doing highlights in different ways as opposed to, as I'm doing right now, as you can see, just lines on the, you know, what's I guess well known as edge highlighting, but also just throwing in some random lines here and there, kind of like just what I did there. It just adds a little bit more character to the miniatures. So see, as you can see there, it never has to be necessarily just, you know, doing, um, highlights just solely on the edges um, but that's something you know it took me a while to start doing this it's just something that comes with practice and um, you know, as your confidence builds you can feel more confident just going ahead and, and at least trying different things like that and, and as you can see I've just jumped straight in uh, to adding a little bit of white scar there to the Aramon blue just to immediately bring up those colors And I realized I missed a little bit there and wanted to bring that out a bit. So I've just gone back to the previous mix. As I wanted it to be a little bit more vibrant, but see, again, that's the best thing. You can just quickly jump between the colors. 
without any harm done. just with a little bit more white scar added to the mix. Just really want to bring out the edges of the miniature just to really make all of the, um, the color pop. I did feel as though that highlight I did then was a bit too strong, so I'm going to go back and just, in the recesses, add a bit more of the Thousand Suns blue. And just like that, you can fix it up. For those of you who don't actually um, own a wet palette, um, or if you've never used one, um, the best thing is, uh, one, again, one of the best things is that you can just close it up and your paint will still be fine the next day. Um, although, depending on how wet the sponge is, uh, sometimes the following day the paint can be quite um, watered down to the point where it's not necessarily like an ink. Um, but you may need to add a little bit more paint to it just to thicken it up a little bit. But generally, when you actually put the paint down on a wet palette, you don't even need to add water to it. Uh, very rarely do you need to add water to it um, because the water from the sponge um, seeping through onto the paper uh, provides all the water you really need for a general application of the paint.
Alright guys, well that's going to be it for today's uh, tutorial, so I hope you found this useful. If you did, leave a like, uh, perhaps a comment of something you'd like me to do in the future. Um, and uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel and um, I'll uh, see to doing... I'm thinking my Chaos Warrior Shields next. Um, I also want to run through the Scale 75 Copper Series paints, uh, because when I was actually looking into those paints, um, I couldn't actually find a video um, tutorial that actually shows you how to use it. I mean, it does come with instructions, um, but it's always nice to have, you know, uh, to be able to actually watch a video to see how it's used. Um, so, yeah, I reckon I'll do that one maybe next, or the shield next, but anyway, um, have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.